When I watched the show, I asked myself why they were excluding non-survivors, like professional writers. It just wasn't fair. Being a man of action, on paper at least, I decided to do what my part and find out what surviving was all about. Of course, I would only bring ten items with me and have absolutely no help to survive, except for what I hold up here, of course. To be or not to be. To survive or not to survive. Those are the things that we wonder about when we are out in the woods trying to live and survive and eat and drink and all sorts of other things that I can't remember. Anyways, that's sort of how it goes, that, that survival sermon by Shakespeare. scared, a little worried, but ready to do it. I'm going to be alone and I'm going to survive. I brought my 10 items I needed with me uh, and I figured this is just as good a time for us to take a look at what I brought. So here they are. I've got my tarp. I've got a survival blanket. I've got my book on how to survive. My glasses to read the book. I've got some string. A coat hanger, which and a coat hanger and duct tape are ex excellent survival items. And uh, I brought a razor because you have to look good. And uh, a pull tab uh, from a coke can, uh, which I'll explain a little later. And uh, finally, the last thing I've got are some marshmallows because you can't do camping without marshmallows. So I'm going to head off into the woods and. Uh, see what uh, areas I can find to uh, set up my shelter and everything. So, uh, just follow on behind me. Look at this. A cane! I found a cane! <laughs> you know, uh, out in the woods here, uh, just like the, uh, the show, there's uh, some concerns about uh, predators out here too. Um, for one, there's, there's some cats out here. Uh, not 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 wild cats, uh, house cats, but uh, you know they they're dangerous. You know if they're hungry and everything. Uh, and uh, then there's uh, there's skunks. Um, there's lots of skunks here, and they smell pretty bad. And that would be hard to get out of this suit. Let me tell you. Uh, finally, uh, they they have uh, snakes, garden snakes. There's lots of garden snakes around here when you're lying down on the ground, and you know, who knows what could happen. And finally, uh, leeches. Uh, they have some pretty darn big leeches around here. So let me tell you, that's something to be concerned about. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll keep looking and keep our eyes out for it. Well, I think I found myself a spot. A uh, little place here, there's a couple of trees I've got on my side here, which I can set up and have my tarp in between. I've got my rope here and uh, I seem to have bit, uh, made a bit of a mistake here in my survival equipment. I didn't, uh, I didn't bring any scissors or anything to cut rope, so we'll have to figure that out as we go here. But it's time to set up the camp. I guess my first survival lesson is going to be to figure out how to cut string without a knife. So let's give that a shot. Another method of uh, installing a tarp is uh, to use the continuous string method 
which as you can see here I've used uh, effectively. Uh, we can see here it goes over there, all one string. That way you don't have to tie so many knots. And uh, it makes uh, putting up the tent very, very easy. Crawling on all fours like this is going to get me filthy. My suit's going to be ruined. I think I need to uh, do some protection. There we go. Perfect knee protectors. Well, I've got my tent. Now I need some fire. And the survival book tells me I need to build myself a bow and drill set. So I guess I'm going to go out in the woods and start looking for some supplies. When looking to make a bow drill, it's useful to know this trick. Get yourself a little sharp rock, find yourself this tree, and just notch the bark like that. That's right. Use the edge of the rock to there you go, do a little scrape, you don't need the rock anymore, and just reach in and you're looking for the cambium layer, the layer right underneath, and you can just start pulling it out in little strips, and here comes, there we go, some rope string from a tree. I found my uh, piece for my bow drill, and I found my tree uh, rope. And there you go, a bow drill. So according to this, the book, I've got to take this and uh, I've got to do a, I've got to twirl it and uh, get it in here. Boy, that's a lot. There we go. And, uh, and then uh, you go and get this. Oh, shit. Okay. Try that again. So I've got that like that. I got that on my bottom piece of wood. Got my top top little roller. And uh, and uh, here, here we go, folks. <coughs> Perversely enough, starting a fire is hot work. Can't even see anything with these glasses. I have to put these out of the way. And this book is it's useless. I never realized it at the time, but losing that book was the beginning of everything unraveling for me. I hadn't just brought that book for survival. I had brought it to have something to read. Now that I've got my fire, it's time to go out there and find some water. <laughs> thirsty, so thirsty. <laughs> Is that the letter R? <coughs> Being a writer, all I had to draw on to find water were idioms. Perhaps they could help. You can't squeeze water from a stone, but maybe you can squeeze it from wood. This isn't working. Oh, no wonder. This is hardwood. What I need is softwood. What I needed was some softwood. Well, I found myself a piece of softwood here. I'm going to squeeze it and see if I can get some water out of it. There we go. Water from a log. Another thing that's useful when you're lost in the wood is to know your way north. And an easy way to find your way north is, of course, to follow idioms found naturally in books. Um, uh, so one of these idioms is that moss always grows on the north side of a tree. So it's a simple way to find the north. Let's go find some trees and look at the moss. No moss here. 
No moss here either. None there either. Another way to find the north is uh, there's a word that uh, I, rem I, I I think there's a word that says that if you point uh, the way the way east with one hand and the way west with the other, then your face is going to be your nose is going to be pointing north, and the back of your head is going to be pointing south. But I don't remember the word, so I guess that's no use to me. When you can't find north. You have to just keep plugging. That's what survival is all about. Now that I've got my tent, and I've got my fire, it's time to look for food. So let's get at it, because I'm getting pretty hungry. Hey, doesn't that look like the letter W? I may look as cool as a cucumber to you, but finding food is a tough nut to crack. You have to be one smart cookie if you want to get back on the gravy train and eat some food. It helps to keep your eyes open to hear the sounds of things that make sounds. Hey, take a look at this. I'm lucky to have found this right near my camp. This is rather rare, but it's called by the local natives uh, the fish stick bush. As you can see, it's in bloom. So, now when you take these out, you should be careful, uh, because they are cold and flaky. Of course, you should never eat these raw. Uh, they need to be cooked. So you should uh, do them at uh, 350 uh, uh, for about 30 minutes and uh, don't forget to flip them after about 15 minutes. You have to have your senses on the alert. You look on the edge of brush like this, at the bottom of some trees, usually if there's a little rock on the side, and uh, you take a look underneath, right over here, and ah, there we go. A cluster of ground apples. Uh, exactly what we're looking for. Let's get that. There we go. Excellent. At supper. I can see a V. Yeah. What am I doing looking at the sky like this, looking for letters? I've got to find some food. Although I've been around books all my life, I thought I'd be fine without anything to read. But I wasn't fine. I was slowly going mad. Sheesh, I was so distracted looking at the clouds I almost missed. Look at that. This is a perfect example of something you'd miss if you weren't looking for it. Let's see if we can't get it out of here. I think it's coming. There we go. Yes sir, that's a good specimen, a tree carrot. This will go good with those fish sticks. We've got fire! It's time for marshmallows! It was getting worse. I needed words, nouns, adjectives, even articles. Well, here I am inside my tent getting ready for sleep. I've got my survival blanket with me, and uh, I guess it's time to get set up. I'm going to use my, my pack, uh, my big bag here as a uh, pillow, and uh, we should be comfortable as everything. There shouldn't be... Doesn't work very well. Not much of a blanket. Not much of a blanket. I'm just not comfortable. Something's sticking in my back. Let me see if I can find. Wow, there's 
my problem. Much better. Can't sleep. Too many noises. What was that? Was that a rhino? That's an elephant. A coyote. A wolf. I don't want to be here. I miss my books. I miss my books. What sound does a skunk make? Shakespeare, Dickens, Mark Twain. All the greats that I never read. I'd read them now. I would. I'd read toothpaste tubes right now. I'd read anything. Anything. <clears throat> oh, I'm so stiff. Good morning. I made it through the night. Ah, well, time to get up. My mouth is pretty pasty. I wish I could have a brush my teeth. I hear tell that there's some branches that you can use to brush your teeth with. Let's see if I can't find one. Let's try this one. <coughs> That's not toothpaste. Getting up in the morning in the woods is no easy thing to do, but we can't forget that we have to stay in shape and look good. So I think that what I'm gonna do is take off my jacket, put my coat hanger to use. And it's time for a shave. Now, I don't have a mirror, but I do have my camera. So I'm going to look in here, and darn, that's a reverse. I can't judge this. There we go. That's not working. There. Survival isn't just about surviving, it's about other things. You can't just do one without the other. Oh, I seem to have gotten some blisters. Hey, I know what I could do. Yep, that does the trick. It's time to think about food again. I've got plenty of fish sticks, ground apples, and uh, carrots, but I wouldn't mind a bit of variety. Maybe it's time to do a little bit of fishing. Fishing is an art, and you need the right tools. And that's what I'm doing right now, looking for a fishing line. And I think I found just the thing right here. A good stick. It's not long enough, but I know what to do to make it longer. Alright, I don't know if you remember, but I had a tab in my survival trick, and this is the time to use it. We're going to make a fish hook. Here we go. So the first thing is we've got to break a little hole, a slot over here, to, so we can make the, sh the sharp edge here. So we're going to use a rock for that. There we go. Perfect cut. Once I had cut the pull tab, all I had to do was shape it into a fish hook. There, I think that's pretty good. What do you think? Looks pretty good, if I'd say so myself. Hmm, I'm gonna need some help. Another thing you could do with a coat hanger mm -hmm. is thread a needle. There's only one more thing we need for fishing. Perfect. Doesn't that remind you of the letter Q? Hey, what's this? Looks like I found myself some wood parasites. I hear tell they taste like chicken. Let's give it a try. Does it doesn't taste much like chicken. Well, if I can't eat the worms, I may as well use them for bait. 
I had never fished before, so I did feel like a fish out of water. The only thing that came to mind that could help was a book called The Old Man in the Sea. I think that's about fishing. Will you look at that? Water. And more likely, fish. I don't want to survive. I want my books. I want my books. I just want my books. I got one, I got one. What is that? That's, so that's not, I can't believe it. It's not possible. It's the Vostok Juncture, a five-star thriller. Unbelievable. I'm saved. Thank you, thank you. With the Vostok Juncture in hand, I could brave any survival scenario, but it no longer mattered. I was back where I belonged in my library.